In breaking news out of Ferguson tonight, where the grand jury in the Michael Brown case has reached a decision. An announcement is expected from Prosecutor Bob McCullough at any moment. It's been 108 days since Officer Darren Wilson shot and killed Brown, and tonight we will find out if he'll be charged with a crime. We also will hear from Missouri Governor Jay Nixon in about an hour and a half to a half hour. And we'll have that for you live. But what happened inside the grand jury, the secret grand jury? What decision did those 12 people come to? And what is the mood on the ground in Ferguson tonight? We'll have all angles covered tonight, from the legal to the voices in Ferguson. And we start tonight outside the Center of, Just of Justice in Clayton, Missouri, with MSNBC's Craig Melvin. Craig, this moment has been months in the making. What's the mood? Uh, Rev, I, I, would, I would describe the mood as anxious. I mean, as you said, 108 days uh, since, since that shooting here in Ferguson. Uh, law enforcement anxious, regular citizens anxious, protesters anxious. Uh, we've seen over the past few hours uh, more barricades go up around the Justice Center behind me where the grand jury had been deliberating. We've seen uh, monuments in front of the police department here in Clayton covered. Uh, we've seen uh, streets blocked off as well. We've seen more businesses uh, board up. All of those those things happening in just the, the last few hours as folks here in Clayton prepare uh, for this, this decision that's going to be announced. So on the one side, you've got this, this anxiousness, but you've also got a fair amount of confusion as, as well, Rep. We still haven't been able to confirm precisely when that announcement is going to be made tonight. Is it going to be uh, 8 o'clock is the last time we've heard uh, Eastern? But again, we haven't been able to get that confirmed. Uh, and also confusion over the release of those grand jury documents. We right. were told uh, yesterday that it would not be happening. A short time ago, the St. Louis Dispatch, the paper record here in St. Louis, reporting that the documents will be released uh, if, if Officer Wilson is not indicted. So anxious and confused here on the ground. All right, Craig, please stay with me. I, I want to bring in Lu sure. Lisa Bloom, attorney and legal analyst for Avo.com. Thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for having me, Rev. Lisa, we just learned Ferguson schools are planning on closing tomorrow. You know this community. What's the feeling right now? Well, I don't think schools should be closed. I personally think children should be in school as much as possible, and perhaps they should be educated on this outcome. Uh, whichever way it goes, they should be enlightened about what's going on in their community. Uh, those kids who are not in school, I would encourage them to be out as part of the peaceful protests, which I expect to take place, just as those protests have been 99 percent peaceful since August 9th, when Mike Brown was shot. And, uh, and, and I think you're right. But bring me inside the jury room, Lisa, so people and I will understand how this works. The grand jury is made up of seven men, five women. Three of the grand jurors are black, nine are white. Take me in the room and, and how sure. the prosecutor presented evidence and what it was like as the grand jurors deliberated. Sure. Well, to understand what happened, we have to understand the way the grand juries usually go down 99.9% .9 of the time, which is the prosecutor puts on a very short, abbreviated case, a couple of witnesses. Here, that would be just to show that Mike Brown was shot and killed by Darren Wilson, not disputed. A couple of the eyewitnesses who say that Mike Brown's hands were up in the universal sign of surrender at the time that he was shot, and then recommend charges. Manslaughter or second-degree murder would be the most obvious. That's not a at all what happened here, though. Darren Wilson got special treatment. I mean, there's really no question about that. The treatment that he got was prosecutors who didn't want to file charges directly. Right. Instead, they went to the grand jury. They put on all of the evidence, they say, including all of the evidence that helps the defense. Darren Wilson testified for about four hours. Was he rigorously cross-examined, as he should have been? We just don't know. But most importantly, the prosecutors have said here that they are not recommending any particular charges. So they are sending a very clear signal. I think to this grand jury that they don't particularly think charges are appropriate, or at least it's up to the grand jury to figure Which out. Which is why now, some of us question this. Let me go back to Craig. Craig wanted to correct something. 
No, 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 no correction here, Reverend Al, but I do want to clear up some confusion in, in the past minute or two. We have heard from the uh, prosecutor's office, and they confirm now that the grand jury announcement is going to be made at 8 o'clock local time here. Yeah, you said 8 o'clock uh, Eastern time, so. is 8 o'clock uh, Central time, yeah. 8 o'clock Central, uh, right here behind me in the Justice Center. Uh, and we're also told, we were told, uh, that the prosecutor is going to be taking some questions as well. All right. Thank you, Craig. And uh, the governor will be speaking in the next few minutes. We'll take that live. Uh, but uh, we are told that the announcement will be 8 o'clock Central, which is 9 p.m. Eastern time. I can also say uh, some of us are going into Ferguson. The parents are not appearing till tomorrow. Whatever the uh, decision will be will not be discussed till tomorrow. Uh, let me go back to Lisa. Lisa, yes. uh, for months, the prosecutor gave assurances that if there isn't an indictment, all the evidence would be released. He said that he had reached an agreement with the judge to do it. Let me let you hear it. And there's no probably about it. It will be released. We've asked the judge to do that, and, and uh, the judge has agreed that, uh, that she will do that. If there is no indictment, she will authorize the release of the testimony and the physical evidence that was uh, presented to the grand jury. Now, Lisa, the uh, county court's top administrator says that's not true, quote, Judge Whittington has entered no such order and has made no such agreement. You know, I I'm shaking my head, Reverend, because there have been so many out-and-out -out misstatements from the prosecutor, from the local police. The disrespect for this community has been at an all-time high. I believe that the prosecutor has been hiding behind this idea that I'm going to release the entire transcript from the very beginning, knowing full well that that would probably not happen, because grand juries are typically held in secret, because he would need a judge's order to do that, and because a judge probably would not do that. And, you know, Reverend Al, you've made it your life's work to fight for equality across America and especially in our criminal justice system. How can this prosecutor justify the unequal treatment that he's given to Darren Wilson in this case, that no other defendant that I'm aware of in St. Louis has gotten this kind of treatment? Listen, if I were accused of a, tr a crime, I would love to get the Darren Wilson treatment. A prosecutor who doesn't particularly think I should be prosecuted, putting on all of the defense evidence, not recommending any particular charges, making misstatements to the press, leaking information that only is one-sided that helps the police officer here. I mean, it's absolutely appalling and shameful what's going on. Well, to be very clear, the grand jury is not to try the innocence or guilt of the accused. It's only to establish whether there is enough probable cause right. to go to trial. And they have acted in this case, as far as we could tell from the outside, as if this was a trial jury, not a grand jury. That's right. This is the lowest legal standard that we have in our system. Probable cause. Is there just enough evidence to hold somebody over for a trial? And at the trial, of course, Darren Wilson, like any defendant, could put on all of the evidence that might uh, support his side. But in this case, I mean, to me, this is even worse so far than the George Zimmerman case, because we don't even have a special prosecutor appointed. We don't have the family being respected by the prosecutors. And we don't even have charges being filed. This is just about whether charges should be filed. This is just about whether we can meet that very low standard of probable cause. Everything that's happened in the last few months is just to get over that very, very low hurdle. Yeah, I, I think, and I think that that's where a lot of people don't understand the basis of the protest, the basis of the questioning, is not demanding guilt, but demanding if you have six or seven witnesses saying he had his hands up, you have conflicting witnesses that say the officer was right. That's the basis of going to trial. That's not the basis of you trying it in the grand jury. Right, absolutely. And to let all of the defense theories come out before the grand jury, I mean, that is really unheard of. And again, I would like to know why this prosecutor doesn't offer these same advantages to the other mostly African-American defendants in his jurisdiction. Why don't they get these advantages when their cases are heard before the grand jury? Instead, they get the standard operating procedure across America, which is you put on a couple of witnesses, you recommend charges, 95% of the time the grand jury agrees with you, and the person goes to trial or they plea bargain. Darren Wilson got a very special kind of treatment, and there's never been an explanation as to why. And, and, and I think that the other thing that, that really made a lot of people question this and uncomfortable is that 
all of that being said and done, operating differently than many of us have experienced down through the years. I, I think that many of us would have been negligent not to raise the questions. And again, not because I hear some critics say they're demanding an, a, a conviction. We're demanding due process the way it always was, those of us that have, the way you yeah. do any other case. Right. You're, you're just asking. We're all just asking for a trial. But I will say, Reverend Al, I would caution everyone, even if this grand jury overcomes what I think was a very obvious message from the prosecutors, that they don't want an indictment, and even if the grand jury issues an indictment today, we still have the problem of a prosecutor's office who does not appear to have any energy behind prosecuting Darren Wilson. And so even if they charge him, next up is a trial. Are they going to handle this in the very uh, poor way that the Trayvon Martin case was handled, failing to call expert witnesses, failing to put yeah. together a theory of the case, failing to prepare witnesses, failing to do an effective closing argument, because we, the people, can't get behind the closed doors of the prosecutor's office and make them mm -hmm. zealously advocate for the murder victim here, Mike Brown. I wonder, has anybody been advocating for Mike Brown in that grand jury? Well, that's the that's question. That's the role of the Lisa, prosecutor. Lisa, I want to bring in the Washington Post, Wesley Lowry. He's live in Ferguson. Wesley, you've been there uh, in and out throughout the last three months or more. Uh, what's the mood there right now? It's a very transitional mood right now. You have everyone is kind of getting things in place. You have people coming home from work, parents getting their children home. You got a lot of, you'll see a lot of motorists coming behind us right now. Ferguson's busy, but we don't have a lot of people out and about yet. People are waiting. They're under the impression they've got a little bit of time before the, before the actual decision comes out. And what, what, in the last several days, I know there have been appeals by the parents for, for peace, uh, no matter what is announced. There's been a lot of work on the ground, I know, from different groups uh, that, that I'm privy yeah. to and involved with. Uh, how do you think uh, that will kick in now, no matter what decision is announced tonight? As I talk to protest groups and organizers, leaders throughout the day, clergy members throughout the day, there's been a lot of effort that have gone into trying to keep whatever the reaction is tonight, because we will see a reaction. We will see a moments of silence. We will see massive acts of civil disobedience. We will see protests. There's been a lot of work done by those leaders, those organizers, to keep things peaceful. What remains to be seen is if we see the emotional outpouring in the community the way we saw in August, and or if we see some type of outside group, whether it be local gangs, whether it be a national group that has come in, whether they try to take advantage of the emotion to cause some type of violence. That's what we, we don't know yet. As far as the people who are planning, they are trying to keep things peaceful yeah. and they've put together some very, very specific plans of what they want to do tonight. But you never know. Anytime you have hundreds of people in the street, that's, a, that's great cover for somebody who may want to cause a problem. That's correct. Great. Uh, Craig Melvin, Lisa Bloom, Wesley Lowry, thank you all for your time tonight. Coming up, we'll be live at the news conference from Missouri Governor Jay Nixon, also the potential charges. A closer look at what the grand jury's been considering for Officer Wilson. And peaceful protests. What Michael Brown's parents have been saying since the death of their son. It's a dramatic night of breaking news. The announcement coming at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Full coverage ahead.